الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لإلاف قريش إلافهم رحلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البيت الذي أطعمهم من جوع وآمنهم من خوف صدق الله العظيم The surah that I have just recited to you The surah is called Surah Al-Quraysh Quraysh is the tribe of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam If you look at any prophet Before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam People are mentioned, country is mentioned, but not the tribe. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam's country is also mentioned, Makkah, by its old name, Bakkah. It is also mentioned as a place where everybody faced towards as a qibla. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the construction and the beginning and the whole history of this special city. On top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the tribe of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And when you look at all of these different pieces, you come to a point that it just did not happen. It happened through a great planning. And that planning started thousands of years before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was even born. One of the first pieces of that planning was taking Ibrahim alayhi salam out of his home country where he establishes a family and then he get to a point where his only son Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to take him away on a land where Ibrahim alayhi salam himself calls it that this is a valley where nothing grows no man, no being can survive There is nothing that grows. There is no source of water. Nothing. It's barren land. And look at the fate of his wife, Hajra. When he's leaving, she's asking him only one question. And is this whatever you are doing by the command of Allah? And he says, yes. And she says, that's it. Now you go away. Me and my son, Ismail, a newborn, a baby, will survive. How? Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted anything to happen to us, could have happened anywhere. When He brought us all the way over here, there must be a reason, there must be a purpose. And long story short, with Zamzam, a life began. A settlement began. The tribe of Jurhum moved in. And there were intermarriages. As a result, a long history started. But Jurhum, over the period of time, got corrupted. And a tribe from Yemen moved in the vicinity of Mecca. Now think about it, this is all planned. People in Yemen were very happy. They had a dam that was 700 years old. The dam by the name of Ma'arib, which is said the Ma'arib. The dam broke. All these farmers, which were farming by the side of this dam... They had no other source of water. So it started leaving out. So Banu Khuza'a left Yemen and they came to Mecca. Aus and Khazraj left Yemen and they came to Medina. They're all coming from Yemen. And then these Khuza'a noticed that these people of Jurhum are mean towards the pilgrims. So they joined hands with another tribe, Bani Bakr. And they said, let's displace these people. And eventually they were displaced. 
When they were displaced, Khuza'a took in charge. Quraysh were nowhere in the picture at this time. And Quraysh slowly and gradually started moving out. Anyway, they were not in leadership position even at the time of Jurhum. They were just surviving. And this is we're talking about seven generations before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. During the times of Kilab, when he died, his wife took the son Qusay and moved out. Went all the way up north, Syria. When a boy grows up, Qusay, he said, I want to go back to my homeland. And he comes to Makkah. He establishes himself in Makkah, marries into the daughter of the chief of Makkah. And then when the chief of the Makkah passes away, everybody comes to Qusay and wants him to become the leader of Makkah. He becomes the leader of Makkah. And then he starts gathering Quraysh back in Makkah and start displacing Quza' with the Quraysh. Then after him comes the time of his son Abd Manaf. Then comes the time of the great grandfather of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Hashim. Hashim realizes that the main source of income for the people of Quraysh is trade. We go out of Makkah, we do buying and selling. But the problem is, we don't have safe routes. So there must be a way that at least the people who serve the house of worship should get some benefit out of it. So he goes out and he signs treaties with different tribes. And everybody agrees because to all of the Arabia, that is the house of worship. These are sacred people. So they sign treaties. And now they get a safe passage from the Makkah, down south all the way to Yemen, and up north all the way to Syria and Iraq. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about it and says, لِإِلَافِ Quraysh, The security of Quraysh, security of the Quraysh in the winter times and in the summer time and other times that you would travel. Who provided that? I did. So when I did so much for you, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ Why don't you then worship the true God of this house? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do you have so many idols around you? Get rid of them. Come back to the Lord of Ismail. The one and only one God. And that's where the rift started. This is not the time of Hashim. This is not the time of his son Abdul Muttalib. This is not the time of their son Abdullah, the Prophet's father. This is the time of the Prophet. And some of his uncles. Some of his uncles. Only four we find very prominent. Out of those 11 brothers, we have Hamza and Abbas who believed. Abu Talib, he passed away before the Prophet migrated to Medina. And we have this Abu Lahab character that we see all the way through as an evil character and also mentioned in the Quran. So notice there is Quraysh where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about it. And then another chapter which is about the doom of Abu Lahab and his wife. And you make, make you wonder, wow, this is part of Quraysh. What's going on here? He must have done something extremely evil. That being so close to the guidance, he's the neighbor of the Prophet. Prior to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam coming out and telling people that I'm the Prophet of God, two of his daughters are about to marry two sons of Abu Lahab. Everything is done. The nikah is done. They have just not moved into the house. And Abu Lahab is an uncle that when he came to hear that the Prophet Muhammad is born, he freed his slave girl. But all of a sudden things turn around. The same day, both of the Prophet's daughter gets divorced by the two sons of Abu Lahab. The oldest daughter of the Prophet, Zainab, there's a tremendous amount of pressure on that son-in-law. But that was a man of his words. He said, I'm not backing off. 
I married this woman. And he is also related to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through his in-laws. This extreme time of pressure. And he bears it. He goes out of his house. He has to face what we can't even imagine. Every eye that look at him has questions. Every hand that moves towards him is a hand of an enemy. Outside his house, he would find garbage. He would be greeted with thorns on the way when he is going into the Kaaba to pray. When he's praying in the Kaaba, Abu Jahl would approach him and says, Did I not ask you not to pray here? If I see you next time praying in Kaaba, Ya Muhammad, I will kill you. And he tried. He tried. But Allah protected his Prophet. He tried with a big stone. But that stone was about to fall back on himself when he scared and ran away. And when his friends asked him, what did you see? He said, Baini, between me and him, there was a big animal. If I would have done anything, it would have hit me hard. So these are the kind of situation the Prophet is living in. He walks around and he sees the followers being punished, tormented every day of life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling his prophet, patience. Tell the believers to be patient. And this is the beginning time. We do not have Hamza on the side. We don't have Umar on the side. We have some people from business community. They're wealthy people. But they're not strong. Community doesn't look up to them. We do have Uthman radiallahu an. We have Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas. We have Abdul Rahman ibn Awf. We have Zubair ibn Awam. We have Talha. But these are very small people compared to Abu Sufyan, Abu Jahl, Khalid ibn Walid's dad, Walid, Udba bin Rabi'ah, Shayba bin Rabi'ah. Aswad bin Abdi Yaguth, As bin Wa'il Sahmi, these are top cream leading the Quraysh. These people stand nowhere. And this is the pressure that the Prophet bore. For who? For us. For the time to come. For the people to come. With a statement from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, La ikraha fi deen. لا إكراه في الدين. There is no compulsion in religion. And when Prophet would get sad, why is this guy not believing? You cannot control these people, O Prophet, that they believe or not. The guidance lies in my hand. You are a messenger. You're not a policeman. The Quran unfolds all of these things for the Prophet and for the time to come. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says right in the next part. I talked about it last week. لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي. When the difference between the right and wrong is so open, then why do you have to worry about it? Remember, whoever will take it shall take it, and whoever will leave it will only going to do harm to him or herself. Because after understanding, they denied the faith. So faith. And the teaching has to first reach an individual to deny to be a kafir, to be a disbeliever. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laid very foundation principles in front of us. And there were times in Medina when these ayahs were revealed, la ikraha fi deen. There were people in Medina, same house, Hussein radiallahu anhu, same house. The father is a believer. Both sons are Christians. Abdullah ibn Abbas narrates it. It comes in the books of Tafsir. La ikraha fi deen. Under this ayah. Both sons are Christians. He comes to the Prophet and says, I could not convince them. They are not coming to Islam. And the Prophet said, La ikraha fi deen. Qad tabayyan ar-rushtu min al When the tribe of the Jewish people were leaving the Medina, 
it was a custom for the people of Medina that they will, before the Islam came, they would give their sons into the Jewish families. And they will raise as Jewish people, as the Jewish, under the Jewish tradition. So when these tribes are leaving, their sons are also leaving with those tribes. And they run after their sons and say, you can't go. You're one of us. We only gave you into those families, but they don't want to come. They said, we were raised there. We were raised on those principles. We follow that religion. We're not by birth Jewish, but we don't want to live with you guys. You're... We don't believe in what you believe. And they're sad. And the Prophet's response was, La ikraha fiddin, qad tabayyan arrushtu min al But when the Makkah was conquered, when Makkah was conquered, and a lot of the Quraysh came to Islam, but still some did not. That was an interim period. But Quraysh was a very tribal mentality. To them, everything that a tribe owns is the legacy of the tribe. And what you don't get, you hold grudges. So we have three main tribes in Makkah. Very strong tribes. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam's family is one of the tribes, the Banu Hashim. And opposing to Banu Hashim is Banu Makhzum, the tribe of Aba Jahl. Now Aba Jahl is not in the picture anymore, but other people are. And then at the same time, we have Banu Umayyah, which is being led by Abba Sufyan. And if you look at the history, the early history of the Madani period, you will notice that majority of the wars happened and the due cause was Abu Sufyan. The Battle of Badr. Who sent the message? It was Abu Sufyan. On whose message? The entire Makkans came to defend the caravan because all of that had their investments in that particular caravan. They wanted to get the belongings out of that caravan so that they can fund the war. So now the caravan is jeopardized. So of course they want to come out and defend it. Second war, the Battle of Uhud, led by Abbas uh, Sufyan. The Battle of Ditch, Abu Sufyan is at the forefront. So you notice that this tribal mentality is there. So what I'm about to ta- talk about here is the narration that comes in Ibn Majah. And it also, it comes in Mustadrak Imam Hakim. Makkah is conquered, and the Quraysh are still in that tribal mindset. So the uncle of the Prophet Abbas, ta'ala anhu, the only surviving uncle at that time, he himself reports it. He said, after the Makkah was conquered, and Banu Hashim came in power, technically, but it was actually the reign of Islam, but these tribal people didn't understand it. So how did they react to it? He says, Whenever we, from the Banu Hashim, from Banu Muttalib, would go past the people of Quraysh, and they will be talking among themselves, they will stop talking. As soon as they would see us, they will stop talking. They will stop holding our conversation. And they would not talk to us the way they used to talk to us before. But they were extremely cool with each other. He said, we felt it. So, فَذَكَرْنَا ذَلِكَ لِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ So we mentioned it to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that we have believed. We're not the pagan Quraysh. We're your family. This is Quraysh who have also believed. But they keep distance. When we enter in their presence, they stop talking. They hold back their conversations from us. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam came out to the people and said, Ma balu aqwamin. What's wrong with you people? Yattahaddathuna, when you talk among yourself, فَإِذَا رَأَوْ رَجُلًا مِّنْ أَهْلِ بَيْتِي But when you see people from my ahl, from my family, from my house, قَطَعُوا حَدِيثَهُمْ You stop talking? Listen you all. Wallahi by God. La yadkhulu qalba rajul al-iman. The iman shall not enter into your heart. Hatta yuhibbahum lillah wa liqarabatihim minni. Until you start loving my family for the sake of Allah and because they are close to me. 
Now look at it. The Prophet is saying, the Iman will not enter your hearts. Your hearts will not have a purity of Iman if you hold grudges against who? Ahla Bayti, my family. So when we talk about a lot of things, there is one aspect we sometimes forget to mention, and that is the family of the Prophet. The love. The respect that the companions gave at their times to the family of the Prophet. You wouldn't believe that Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they if they were riding, if they were riding and they would see Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet, in the city of Medina, they will get off. They will get off. And they will take him to his house. Then they will part their way. You wouldn't believe when Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who was giving out the stipends for the companions. The stipends were ahl bayt was more than his own son. His son said, why? He said, because they're better than you. So their approach was very different. They held high respect for the family of the Prophet. Because to them, these things happen in front of them. But somehow, we forget to mention that when we stand here. All we talk about are the fundamental tenets which are based on love and not based on force. So if we drive the religion with the force of love, things will become much easier for all of us. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. हमारे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करना ना भूलें और बेल के आइकॉन पर क्लिक करें ताकि आपको रेगुलर नोटिफिकेशन अपडेट्स मिल सकें.